Gather round. It's time for your real estate chalk talk with the Hitner Group at Coldwell Banker Burning. Listen closely as your coaches discuss the culture, the economy, and the political scene, and how it affects your home and your real estate investments. Real Estate Chalk Talk is where you learn the science of buying and selling real estate and the art of living in your home. Your education begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. <clears throat> it's spring. We're rolling around in the, the real estate market. Going to give you some numbers update as we get rolling right into it. Eric Everson with Action Moving is uh, it, with us in the studio. We'll be chatting with him later about the activity that's bubbling and boiling uh, on the moves out of Minnesota. I looked at a map the other day that they had the... Uh, uh, the pluses and minuses of the various states. Hmm. Oh, I bet that was interesting. It was very interesting. You see, you know, basically all the red states, uh, that's where people are moving to. And it's and this really fundamentally has to do with taxes. So Florida, Texas uh, are the big winners of, uh, yep. of that whole situation. And then most of your, virtually all of the Democratic-run states are losers. It's huge. My buddy Scott's losers. moving to Florida. He is. Yep. Wow. I've had so good many. for him. Yeah, I'm good excited for him. For him. Yeah. So many. Where where are they? Where are you seeing them? A lot of Florida. A lot of Florida. A lot of Florida. <laughs> lot of Florida. <laughs> yep. And yes. and uh, Tennessee. You better find a, Tennessee. A, an yep. uncongested yep. area of Florida before it's congested right? because <laughs> they're all it's gonna be a packed state. It is gonna be a packed state. Yeah, really packed. Uh so anyhow that you was get more interesting. Electoral to see. Votes Minnesota's that way? A, Minnesota's yeah. a neutral kids. What does that mean? Uh, it's uh, it a plus actually, minus. It, it's on the plus minus side. It's actually on the plus side by 004 hmm. percent. <laughs> so we're not quite a percent, but we but we held, we're holding our own May, mainly because it's all that new legalization of marijuana. People are like, let's get going. To yeah, Minnesota. No, high just, taxes. I think, uh, I think it has to do more. High. Yeah, high taxes <clears throat> and other things going to be high here pretty soon. It has to do has with pass? more of the welfare. Uh, pass through the house. Probably, yeah. You having a side conversation? Yeah. Here yeah. Or what We're talking what's about the here? political Calvin's looking the uh, yeah, political environment in the state of Minnesota. Nothing yeah. topical it's, at all. We say it right I now. have yeah. heard that from people that have been calling. What's that? That I'm out of here. Can't deal yeah. with it. You know, yeah. They're done. Yeah. We have two calls this week because of that. Mm -hmm. that uh, they're they're leaving. And they're like my age. You know, they're empty nesters and whatnot. Boomers. Like, See ya. And businesses, too. Yeah. I've had a few big businesses that are moving out of the state down south. Really? For yeah. tax purposes? or uh, They told me political, but yeah. Yeah, that taxes, I'm sure, taxes is part sure of it. It's yeah. part of it, for sure, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and then the people coming in, of course, take such a huge advantage of I t was talking with a uh, agent uh, just yesterday, actually. He's uh, Cambodian. He's from Cambodia. Came over here. He's been an agent for 35 years. And he was just reflecting on it was so funny because he's talking about the different people groups yep. and about how their work ethic is different than his. And it was just really interesting. Mm. You know, you were not talking about a, a Minnesota grown white boy here, right? It is. And he's just complaining that some people groups are just, you know, they're just not as ambitious as we are. As he we was were sharing all the stereotypes with he you? He was sharing all the stereotypes <laughs> with me. Funny. His implicit biases? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, it was pretty it was pretty uh, interesting to listen to him and mm. just to hear his perspective from somebody that came here, uh, couldn't speak English, you know, really just trying to escape uh, communism after Vietnam and uh, and didn't want to get killed it was just very interesting anyhow his perspective on the different people groups coming to minnesota but that's where our population growth is coming from yep. and uh, part of the beauty of that is we've got a very diverse population here in minnesota you got a lot of good food a lot of good culture a lot of good all that stuff uh and there's challenges that come with it lots of language barriers that we come into now with uh, trying to sell real estate where you've got different uh agents even you know that just have a hard time communicating and going across the thing Looking at the numbers here in the Twin Cities, seven-county metropolitan area, though, we've got 3,000, over, 4,395 homes on the market, down from last week, where it was 4,200. It's actually down a little bit. And uh, from a year ago, it's up, though, up about still up Overall about, inventory? Overall inventory is up about 700 houses from a year ago, which still makes really? it just ridiculously low. 4,000 houses. In a seven-county metro with a couple million people in here, there should be 15,000 homes for sale, but wow. uh, not so much. 
uh, houses that uh, new pendings this week, 944 homes sold this week. Uh, that's down from a year ago where it was 1,324. So sales are slowing. I guess that's what sales. It that's the reality. Yeah. That's the reality. It's is, an interesting like yeah. when you look at the stats. I don't want to interrupt you. Why don't no, you finish go ahead. The stats and I'll comment. No, that's it. If it. When you look at the stats and then and you kind of see how it plays out mm -hmm. in reality in the marketplace, there's a little bit of like confusion on. There's how, a lot. How, yeah, how can the market possibly be reflecting this way? But the reality is, is these are general stats for the entire um, metro area. Right. And for instance, I'll just give you a for instance. I'm searching for multiple people in a given city. And so in in the city of Egan, how many homes are available between four hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars? Question. In, how many say it again? How many homes are available in the city of Egan for between four hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars? Hundred and fifty No, four. Zero. Oh zero. Not one. Not one. There is not one house available with okay, let me caveat three beds and three bathrooms. Okay. Not one. So if you're looking for a two story in Egan, and one does come on the market, do you think there'll be competition there? Yeah. Yes, of course there will. And do you think that's going to bleed out <clears throat> to the average market time, 58 days, which is what we're at right now? Mm -hmm. no. Yes or no? No. Yeah. No, it's no. not. No, no way. Won't. It's going to sell within days, right. minutes. People are going to want that house. So it's interesting. I mean, every, you say, oh, real estate's local, local. Yeah, yeah. There's no truer statement than yep. right now. And when you look at the numbers as a whole, like, okay, inventory is increasing. New listings are less, pending sales are less, and market times are extending. A lot of it has to do with the interest rate environment and then the market as a whole, the inflationary pressures, et cetera, elective sales like we talk about are off. Interestingly enough, who do you think the largest uh, who do you think the largest generational group is that is buying houses right now? Who's the largest generational group? We talk about Gen Xers, Gen Z, Millennials. Wouldn't it be the Millennials? Late 20s. So Gen Z. Gen Z. Boomers. No kidding. Boomers now have mm. become the largest buying <coughs> and largest selling Because they're downsizing generation. and buying. Because they're changing. That's why. Yep. And, <clears throat> excuse me, from 2020, 2021, uh, Millennials. Millennials by far were the largest group of people buying homes. Well, just now, Boomers this year, and last because they got the money last, they have great equity position impacted by interest that's right. right they have great we're talking about people that want to move versus people that need to move mm -hmm. boomers are in a position with great equity they don't care about the interest rates if they're going to be buying for cash so if you're interested in targeting a market folks that like you that have maybe adult children like me mm -hmm. they're not raising kids anymore they're in a great equity position in their home to sell their property and then go buy not one but two properties, right. they're buying a house in Florida, and then they're going to buy a townhouse here. Yep. So they're making up a giant portion of That's what so is true. actually going on in the market mm -hmm. right now. Just to, so uh, true. to put an exclamation point on that, so I'm talking to this agent, and he was telling me he's got a number of buyers, and he works primarily with buyers. And he said, I have a number of buyers, but they all need some kind of you know down payment assistance or something like that and he said they're good qualified buyers but they need these programs either fha or zero down or something and he said he just his offers they don't even get a look he can't even get them to look at them yeah and that's a timing of the market thing so if you can extend yourself into the summer or into the fall the market will be slower it just is every year and we've seen it play out the last couple of years where that was even more so versus the previous two years where the previous two years were far more robust they went all through the year COVID hangover the whole bit uh, but now you know dead of some dead heat of summer and fall and into the winter that's when those buyers should be really paying attention that's just where they should target yes you know and so if you're going to look to make a move and you need down payment assistance just shelf it for now yep. because when you go into the city of egan and a house between four hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars there is zero on the market you're not going to be able to compete with a 20, 30, 40% down buyer yeah, absolutely. Uh, or a cash buyer absolutely that wants right. to purchase that property. Yeah, so yeah. you just shelf the idea. Um, and Come we back don't... on in the end of, of July, August, maybe sure. during yep. State Fair. Yep. Sign another six-month lease yep. and come back out, and, and we'll try you in the fall. That's the reality of the market right now. So, thousand. Eric Everson is in the studio. We're chatting about moving, cross-country moving, 
especially. How do you deal with regulatory compliance when you're moving stuff between state to state? What oh, kind of what kinds of things <laughs> licensing and and uh, and uh, uh, you know vehicle applications things you have to take care of there? Yeah. So um, first off, we're an agent for Atlas Van Lines, okay. right? That's our nationwide um, brand. Um, the reason we have those partnerships is because you need the interstate licensing which covers the entire country so all of the uh, agents together own atlas as a whole and uh, that allows us all to share that license if you will Um, so that allows us to transport goods across state lines now you have state regulations right like what's going on in california with the CB5 thing, right? You know that that's a whole different ball of wax. And so, explain to the listeners what I don't that know is. what CB5 I don't is. Know. I'm so confused. Yeah, it's like uh, it's a regulation in that it just the state of California. Go mm-hmm. figure that where they basically want everybody who's like independent contractors to become employees, right? Which is affecting you know the Lyft drivers, which is affecting you know anybody who's independent contractor, including our drivers, which a lot of them own their own trucks, drive across state lines. And uh, so ultimately what happens is you have to pay people a whole different way anytime they go in or out of the state. And historically it's been, okay, if you deliver into that state, you fall under those state statutes. Okay. But they want it even if you drive through the state. You know, so there's all these Seriously. different yeah, different caveats. And, and actually you got local, border checkpoints then or what? <laughs> I guess. I mean, I've had customers that brought their own house plants down to move down there. And, and they, want they got man. pinched on the freeway for mm-hmm. bringing in agricultural stuff you know mm-hmm. and it's in their car right. so I, I don't know how that's they're crazy. catching people but that's um, good they should set up a wall yeah but yeah. build the wall build, <laughs> build the wall build the wall where uh california build yeah. the wall <laughs> build the wall <laughs> from the i thought that kitchen. state was supposed to break off uh, into the ocean anyways we're waiting it? We're remember when we were time. kids yeah, yeah. <laughs> thing. it's in, but so now too a lot of uh, communities are you know facing tax issues and so we've even seen some stuff recently pop up in michigan where if a truck drives through the state or through the county or through the city they're trying to come back at you later and say well you traveled through here so yeah you well they got cameras everywhere that's Fuel another tax. state though too michigan. yeah or whatever you know taxes are trying they're saying yeah. you're doing business by driving through right. you use the road where so. does it stop you know so we used to see trucks going down the road, and they'd have this license, this plate on the back of their truck with stickers from all different states yeah, yeah. in the, in the back of the truck, and and that was that the yes, whole thing. It was yeah. basically a fuel tax that if you go through Iowa, you had to have an Iowa sticker. Yeah, you on put your a little surcharge. And- yep to drive on their roads yep and, and in a sense we pay those still today it's just done a different way you know it's more where you our atlas families will pay like an overarching fee that covers most of the states and then each state like in in the state of minnesota we have to pay different fees and licensing they call it cab cards for example when you're transporting goods within the state that's not interstate that's just within the state and every truck you have to pay that on these are the hidden taxes that people don't realize. Yeah. I mean, that, it's a tax. Yes. So, I mean, you go out, you do your work, you, you get your paycheck, you, they withhold uh, you know, your taxes from you, all that. You go to the store, you buy, you pay sales tax, you get tax on that. But all the way up and down the supply chain, from the from the from the gas you know that gets put into the truck to mm-hmm. deliver the thing there's tax on tax upon tax upon tax mm-hmm. uh, driving that cost up there how do which you is, which is why our state has X billion dollar surplus and the highest taxes of yeah. uh, and we're going to raise it's like we're, we're raising like, yeah, we're right behind yeah. New York with uh, with uh, we're gonna catch them we're going to win <laughs> we're going to catch them yeah uh, how do you make What's your competitive advantage? Because there's a lot of different moving companies, especially mm-hmm. you know local mm-hmm. moving companies, national moving. Companies. What is your competitive advantage? Do you feel for Atlas Van Lines and and your company from a national moving standpoint? Um, capacity and uh, you know the the expanse system that we have across the United States and even even overseas. So um, we have roughly 500. I think it's about 580 offices within the U.S. Right. Well that allows you to access more areas of the country to do moves. And that is our biggest advantage. We're the second largest van line in the country. So um, by having the capacity, I can, say, move somebody out of Grand Marais, or I can move somebody to this rural area of Georgia, because chances are I have an office within 100 miles of there that we can get in there and get that delivered. Yeah. Um, So that's the number one thing. Um, We can put stuff on the board. We know we're going to have the capacity to haul it. And in the cases when we don't, um, we have a lot of resources and partnerships with other offices where we start making calls and say, okay, 
maybe we can put together a piece where a driver's heading from Georgia to Texas and they can happen to hit up this location and, and pick it up. When you, you when you uh, uh, are are talking to someone or about moving or just running your company in general, you mm-hmm. got you know fuel costs are up and and all these things. What's the line that you draw or that you can draw as a company as action moving related to Atlas Van Lines for cost control and cost containment in an inflationary environment and in a high tax state, as opposed to someone that who's maybe running a Atlas Van Lines a branch out of Texas, which is a lower tax state, mm-hmm. and you're both doing a, a move Minnesota to Texas move, for example. So in our tariff, there's actually two line items. One's the origin zip code and one's the destination zip code. And those are designed to offset the costs of that market specifically, whether that's labor, taxes, fuel, whatever. So to move into, say, a zip code in San Francisco will add a lot more to the bottom line cost than, say, moving into a zip code in Buffalo, Minnesota. So that determines how much the overall cost of the move is Correct. for the consumer. Yep. And so any it all tel- just gets passed on anyways. It, it does. Bottom line is it increases or lowers your cost depending on where you're moving from and to. And then there's also areas like, let's say, Montana, Wyoming. I mean, those aren't necessarily high price areas, but they're also kind of dead zones for traffic in and out. So you're also going to pay a little more there because you got to pay a little more fuel and empty truck to space get somebody to get there. in and out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in other words, you're reallocating resources, cost sharing, <laughs> uh, just like that. just like what Kelvin's doing mm-hmm. now in the mortgage business. They're reallocating resources and cost sharing as well. How about as the market has changed now over the last few years? I have to imagine right now, based on how our real estate sales are as a mm-hmm. community here in the metro area, that you know sales are down, et cetera. Have you guys changed anything within your company or do you pick up different business or how does that work for you as a company? Yeah, so uh, we've been doing a lot more commercial proje- projects and also like new builds. There's a lot of model homes and communities going up. The builders are, seem to be going to town on, on putting these things in. So we've been receiving a lot of the goods that are going into those homes mm-hmm. and then going out for delivery. So that business has definitely picked up. Um, also office space in general, there's a Man, I'm touring all these uh, city buildings in both downtown Minneapolis and St. Paul. They're all empty. Mm, are they? And, and they're moving stuff from one building to another. I think they're trying to consolidate and clear up space, probably get rid of a, bil- a, building, a building. But but I don't know who they're going to sell it to. Mm-hmm. You know, talk about technology. You know, we've had this explosion of technology. You've been doing this for a long time. How mm-hmm. has technology changed? In and how do you apply it to the moving business? Uh, I mean, do you use it to, you know? plan on how you're going to load a truck or what, what kind of technology tools well, are available are you a couple using? things there so what the consumer is going to see when i'm on site i use an ipad now instead of chicken scratching right. on, a, on a page but i can produce an estimate unless you have something specific that i need to deal with i can produce an estimate within minutes after seeing your home and email to you on the spot do you, book it. do you uh, plan how your loads are, are loaded how, you yeah, know, with so the furniture that you have? Does it tell the guys, this is how you got to load that truck to no, get it No, they, they kind of know that. But okay. what it does tell them is about how much space of the truck they're going to need for that load, all right. what the weight's going to be. And what that does is it helps the dispatch and planners say, okay, we you know we got to make sure the trucks also aren't over heavy, yeah. overweight, and then also that everything's going to fit on there. So when they're putting their plans together, it's like, okay, we can fit this one and this one and this one on this truck, and it's going the same way, and they just puzzle piece it together. They literally, they change these loads by the hour, okay. like every day by so the hour. So do we need a truck, a truck and a half, or what are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, and they puzzle piece it, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, boy, that, that job is, it's like a traffic controller, you uh-huh. know? Do you, uh, when you got a truck, say you have a truck and a half going to cross country and stuff, you got a half a truck, you're not going to run a truck half empty. No. Do you, what do you load it with? What do you fill it with? More household typically. So there's different sizes of moves going on all the time. Sometimes it'll be like, you know, you have 10 feet of space. Maybe we put a machine on there going somewhere. Okay. Um, but for the most part, it'll be household. Yeah. Okay. Like similar to what you did for me. I mean, you yeah. shipped you shipped a smoker for us down yes. to Florida. That would be an example of okay. there where, you know, maybe there's 10 or 15 or 20 feet of space just loaded it on the back and brought it down there. Probably had a load going down that way already. Mm -hmm. Do you pack for people as well if they say, hey, I don't want to pack it up, I don't want to do anything? Do you do that? Yes. Okay. Full pack. And, you know, um, to to the point of the older people moving, you know, they're doing more of the full packing. I'm seeing more and more of that, even on local moves. 
Um, they just don't have that time and energy to do all that. So I, I've seen more and more of us doing the packing, even on a local move, mm. where historically they've done a lot of that. we got Eric Everson in the studio with Action Moving, Atlas Van Lines, National Mover, big time. Calvin's got a couple of questions, and then I want to follow up with, uh, I just want to know how you deal with customer satisfaction. Sure. So at the end of the last segment, you are talking about, I was just asking questions around full packs. You do yeah. full pack. Yes. And then what if people need to store their stuff, like, hey, I've, I'm moving into a smaller place so I can fit this stuff, but I can't fit this stuff. Do you have storage units? Yes. Or is that up to the person to, like, is that a whole other business you have? Like, it's moving, but then you have a storage unit you use? Or talk through that yeah. or what people do. It is it is part of the moving process. And when I was mentioning about our capacity and all around the U.S., all of our locations have warehouses. They're all okay. indoor, climate-controlled, block secured all that. So if you're moving to, say, Tennessee, you could either choose to store your goods up here at our okay. warehouse or you could store it down there. And that's actually come up a few times when, you know, you're getting in this time of year mm-hmm. where somebody's like, okay, I'm moving all my household to Texas, but I don't need it delivered till November, right? right? I might actually suggest you store it here because prices for interstates are going up. This is peak season. And then come November when you need it, we'll ship it down there then when the prices come back down. And you can actually offset some of your storage costs doing that. That's really a good suggestion, and that we've had that conversation, Kelvin, with a couple of clients just within the last two weeks about because they're moving and they're moving into another space. It's maybe a little bit smaller space. They don't even know if they're going to keep the stuff or not. Right. Right. And so they're just they just want it to go somewhere mm-hmm. where it can stay until the dust settles, if you will, and then they can go in there. Do you ha- at that point do they have to come all at once with the furniture, or can they piecemeal it out and say, look, I, can you bring the couch over, or can you bring this? Yeah, it's probably tr- expensive, isn't it? Yeah, Maybe well, or- so if it's going interstate, you'd want to ship it all at once. Mm-hmm. That's the most yeah. cost. Yeah, by me if it's way. local here. But if it's local here, yeah, we we can bring you know certain items out. However, there's a cost to that. We got to go in and we got to find it, yep. and then we get, so you're better off if you know that plan in advance. We can plan for that, make it more cost effective. Um, otherwise, you probably want to just take it all. We do have some customers that will come out to the warehouse, go through it with us, decide what they want here or there. Maybe they're getting rid of some things, and then we move forward with that because sometimes it's been in storage so long they can't even remember what's all in there. So are you competitive, like, with storage units? Like, I can go rent a storage unit at XYZ Storage. Is it similar? If if you have a locked, gated, secured, climate-controlled, Yes. The thing is, most of those okay. where you lift it up and self-access aren't even climate controlled. No. So those are going to be a little less. They're not expensive. even okay. insulated. Yeah. 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 Most of them are. Yeah. Okay. Talk about the insurance then of that. And and so if I have a valuable uh, hutch, you know, mm-hmm. antique hutch that you come and take it, um, how do you pack that, number one, and then you're going to take it back to your warehouse or across country? What insurance is on that valuable item? So what we would do is pad wrap it when we're transporting it locally or interstate. Sometimes if it's you know something super fragile, it's going overseas, sometimes we might actually create it. Okay. Um, but as far as the insurance coverage, so we will cover things for the minimum legal liability of $0.60 cents a pound okay. per item, which is not that much coverage. Mm-hmm. But you can choose to add more coverage or you can choose not to. It's, it's optional. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have that available for the tariff, which covers the move, right? Mm-hmm. But also, a lot of people's homeowners insurance might cover it. So Mm. it's like 50-50, so you want to check. You don't want to pay for something you don't need to. Right. And if it does cover it in transit or in storage, you don't need to really purchase anything in addition unless you're trying to hedge a large, like, deductible or Mm -hmm. something. But so it's kind of up to you, you know, Mm -hmm. what what you want. And your goods might be worth the the cost to cover it. And sometimes people just want to take the risk on their own and say, we'll we'll go with this. Hmm. Do you have that conversation with people then when you're meeting with them about that? Because I've talked to a lot of people that move, and I said, you know, if they drop the hutch off the back, they're going to weigh it. (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You know. Get that piece over there. Throw yeah. her on the scale. And, you know, that thing could be worth a lot more or it could be worth a lot less, right? right? Yeah. The, I mean, a hutch from 1980, Honeywood look, I mean, mm. you can't even give it away. No, right? really. So right. maybe it's not worth insuring that. But yeah. if it's a nice, you know, Ethan Allen piece or antique, yeah, mm-hmm. you might want to insure that. Hmm. Talk about customer yeah. satisfaction sure. a little bit. Of, you know, how do you, how do you uh, measure it? Uh, and do you measure it, and do you track it, and and uh, do you, do you compare yourself against your competitors, or talk mm-hmm. through that a little bit? Yeah, so there's two two facets to that. So you have the local stuff, you know, within the state. Um, we action moving have our own uh, surveys that we send out to clients. The biggest thing we do. Um, 
we see our advantage as being more, I guess, maybe old school, where we actually go out on site, see the job, counsel people, talk to them about the insurance, talk to them about particular pieces. And then during the moving process, you'll always have your uh, a consultant's number. Like mm-hmm. You can call us directly. And then we always call in and check in on move day or maybe a day or two after because people are so busy during the move day, mm-hmm. a lot of times when I answer. So right. we'll follow mm-hmm. up a couple of days later. How'd everything go? But ultimately, they know if they have an issue, they know mm-hmm. who to call. They know who to get a hold of, and we'll help them right away. And they're always going to be priority on move right. day. What's the percentage of local that you're doing right now and interstate that you're doing right now? Historically, out of your office. So historically, it's like 50-50, right? Oh, really? But okay. last few years, it's probably more like 65 70% local stuff. Okay. And then uh, the rest is interstate. And the reason for that primarily is you have a, a kind of a struggling market with getting Class A drivers. Mm-hmm. So we've we've kind of gone more containerized moving to where you're having a local crew pack and load something, put okay. in a container. Then they ship it like freight to a destination location where then the local crew again is delivering that mm-hmm. out. So that on our books, that's all local business, even though technically it was an interstate move. Okay. Interesting. Talk a little bit about, Kelvin was just asked about packing. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and it just, uh, my final question is when you guys go in and say, uh, uh, you know, just pack it up. There's the kitchen. There's all the glassware and stuff. Pack it up and ship it to, you know, Florida. What's your exposure there from a liability standpoint? Because you're now packing that those yeah, items in yeah. there. So that shows up in Florida and everything's all busted. What's up? So that comes down to, okay, mm-hmm. you have responsibility and then you have the amount, of right? So if we pack it, we're responsible for it. Okay. However, if you don't have any insurance coverage, we're going to cover it at sixty cents a pound. Oh, it is unless so. you add additional. Okay, so, so it matters not if they pack it or you pack it. It's sixty cents a pound. It, it, yes, but except you know if you pack it and you didn't pack it properly, right. the box arrives perfect shape, but the contents are broken. Then it's it's on you. You you won't get anything because right? really? we're not even liable because you didn't pack it properly. The other case, we pack it, it's covered for $0.60 cents a pound mm. unless you had additional coverage. And this is also a conversation to have with people yeah. because if you're going to pay us to pack it, mm-hmm. you may want to purchase the insurance. you know. Or if right. you're packing it all yourself, you may not want to purchase the insurance because you got a 50-50 shot whether it's yeah. your liability or ours. You know, Does that get turned down a lot in yeah. terms of... Yeah, uh, like hey, you know, you didn't. Did you want the it. warranty on that? Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> so nah, I'm good. I, I don't honestly, I don't sell it per se. I just let them know it's available. That's my job to let them know these are your options. Mm-hmm. But I don't really necessarily sell it. Um, it's not a money maker for us by any means. It's just an option that we provide for the clients. And to be honest, like lately, I've had a lot of clients whose homeowners insurance are covering it. So mm. I don't know if that's a change in the insurance market, but I've had more and more of those. Mm. Um, so, you know, that's a much easier policy because you don't have to worry about the illegalities. Let's it would say, have to be a very significant item or amount of items that were destroyed or yeah. broken <laughs> to make it worth for it. you to dab into the homeowner's insurance policy. Right. True. Right. True. Because true. homeowner's insurance, like I mean, that's a whole other conversation there yeah. regarding true. insurance. That's right. true. Garbage. Eric Everson, ladies and gentlemen, action <laughs> moving Atlas Van Lines, thanks for coming in. What's thanks, the contact thanks for I have information? Me. I have, uh, yeah, contact information at actionmoving.com. Oh, yeah. Yep, actionmoving.com, or you can call the main number, 952-894-8888. I'll put that in the show notes. Thank you. Okay, so I got one question for Keith, because he was talking, he gave us a quick uh, and a good summary about Egan in the first segment. I'm curious about about Minneapolis, Hennepin County, if you got... Or how it, those cities compare? Yeah. Well, we were talking about how single-family homes, mm-hmm. so a house, house, not townhouse, condo, things like that, available between four hundred and 800000 I recognize that that is a wide range. Uh, price range for some people, but the median sales price in the Twin Cities as a whole is about three fifty-five. Mm-hmm. So if you're in the three fifties, three hundreds, you're in a, a, a hyper-competitive environment. Yeah, and anything under that, even more so... Um, when you get up into the 400s, you're looking at two stories, probably some three three bathrooms, two car garages, certainly in the cities, probably threes in the suburbs. And in comparing, you know, earlier I said there are zero homes on the market in the city of Egan between 400 and 800,000. There's actually one. It's not actually on the market. It's coming soon now today. So that's exciting. Uh, mm-hmm. It's 729. It's in the city of Egan. But as a comparison, you know, Woodbury has about 25. Eden Prairie has about 15. Mm. Um, 
uh, the city of Minneapolis has about 50, 55, 56 homes that meet that criteria, and the criteria being between 400 and 800, and St. Paul has about 25. So we can go all around the metro area right. and talk about different price ranges, different criterias, townhouses, condos. Um, but for the Apple Valley has like 25, and that is not including new construction. So when you add into new construction some of these communities, you might bump up another 50 or 150 available homes depending on where they are in their build process. So and that's where a lot of your days on market is. Coming. It's are having a huge impact on the numbers of people who are able to buy. Yep. Uh, they're still, because of the low inventory, when the ho- uh, house comes on the market in certain price ranges and certain criteria where there's low inventory, there will be bi- multiple number of people who want that property, mm-hmm. and they're going to bid on it, and it, you're going to have to be a strong buyer. Yeah. Something I wanted to echo from the first segment is that if you are in the boomer category, uh, a lot of you guys are moving around. I don't know if you knew that or not, but uh, the generational... Uh, home ownership numbers came out and boomers are certainly buying and selling more than any other generation right now. They're taking an av- uh, advantage of a market where interest rates are high and they don't necessarily care right. because they have themselves a good <coughs> equity position. Mm-hmm. They're typically coming out of a larger home that they raised their family in, able to sell that property, take some cash, and maybe diversify that into two smaller pieces of real estate, one out of state, one in state, and enjoy their uh, their silver years in a in a much uh, a different and uh, maybe more free situation for themselves. So that if that's you, give us a call at 612-627-8000 or log on to our website, hitnergroup.com. Uh, fill out a little form there and we'll connect with you. Great environment for boomers to be moving around right now. They surpass millennials in, in uh, overall real estate activity mm-hmm. in the country. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that was uh, really interesting. It's interesting to understand that they are – but downsizing here and then buying an additional property typically somewhere else yeah how they're using that revenue so let's talk real quick about what's going on in the mortgage market right now there's um well one i'd say we i did old school this week so went to a client's house 5 p.m mm. right met with them in person Good for consultation you. yeah the consultation love to have a cup of coffee yeah yeah so it was old school i thought god oh, i got i wore a tie and everything looked <laughs> great wow yeah did the did the whole deal but what we're doing there is again, they have a townhome or a con townhome listed for two eighty five or two eighty nine, sold for three oh five. We got extra money. What's the best use of those funds? So we did our cash flow analysis. They said, Hey, could you just come? Yeah, I said we could meet at my office and they go, Well, we have four kids under eight. Could you come to the house? I'm mm-hmm. like, mm. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Better I'm than there. hauling them into your office. Yeah, yeah. So I was there and it was really fun to do that and just look at what's the best use of those funds. And especially as we get into our new environment now that's coming across May 1st, right, where um, where the, we, we talked about earlier where there's this LLPA, right? So this is loan level price adjustments. So there's a lot of talk going on in our industry like, hey, is there discrimination now against a good a good credit person and mm-hmm. a versus bad. Because what that. that really means is that we're taking money from people with good credit, mm-hmm. charging them more. And subsidizing. And subsidizing people with bad credit. Yep. And so what's happening with right. that, it's called, it's called loan level price adjustment. So it's always been there, right? So if you have, if in the past, if you had worse credit, then the cost of that, the cost would be a little bit greater, meaning the rate's a little bit higher. Because the risk For is a higher. reason, yep, right? Because, because the, risk the risk is higher, is higher yeah. et cetera. So what they've done now is they've said, boy, we really want to Flip help. Flip the script on that deal? A little bit and just help people get into home ownership. What, the, what they're missing, we don't have inventory. So we don't need, and this sound, and I don't mean this to sound wrong, but we don't need more buyers. We need more inventory right. for the people who want to buy homes. We have, I have a, we have tons of people looking for homes, just can't find them. But what they're doing is they're shifting so that people that have poor credit and less down, that adjustment that used to be pretty high has gone way down. And where they're, where they're making up that money is the people putting more down with higher credit score. Seems really opposite, but that's what they're doing. Now, there's articles all out like, well, should, I, should I trash my credit so yeah. I can get? Well, of yeah. course not. <laughs> nah. Of course not. It just means that they're shifting it. You as a, a 780 credit score, responsible you're still, consumer. Yeah, you're still going to have a better interest rate than someone who has poor credit and less down. It's going to be a little bit better, but mm, not much. Is there some? You know, is there some uh, <clears throat> uh, point where that 
loan level adjustment goes away. I mean, when I have an 830 credit score, mm-hmm. then am I am I have a higher penalty for that or? Yeah, yeah. basically the it's it's wrong. There's a good there's a great chart I'm looking at here, but the the higher you get on your uh, your credit, you know, it's yeah, it just the less the adjustment is. Yeah. So the less the adjustment is, it's really in that spot from seven six seven eighty down to about seven forty, where they really increased your adjustment. So I was doing rates this mm-hmm. morning, and on a seven forty credit score, a thirty and t- with ten percent down, your rate is six point seven five this morning. Okay, right. If you put twenty percent down, your rate six point nine nine. So your rate's higher because those loan level price adjustments are more, making your rate higher. So it's better to put less down. So now we're looking at the than, overall cost of money. Right. Right. And whether you keep that money over here or right. you put it down on the on the mortgage. And, yep. And that's the whole conversation now. So remember in the past, like, hey, let's get that credit score up. We're going to do this, right, this, this. Right, right. Now you're like, nah, I don't think so. No. I don't Interesting. Think so because with your lower, a little bit lower... Your adjustment isn't that that great anymore. I did the same thing with a 700 credit score, and in that it was about the same. But your rates seven and eight, you know, this morning. So rates have definitely kind of gone up a little bit. High sixes is kind of where you're going to be, and you may be into the low sevens. And uh, you know, we're in, we're excited about May 10th. I have that on tape that we're going to start to trend down. Okay. I think we're just running to the top here. I thought it before. was April 10th. Uh, it's, it's May 10th. If it we just play May back 10th. the tape. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's June 10th. Isn't and it, it may be June 10th. Right. Um, we'll see in the future. <laughs> yeah. So one but, thing that, and, and I know that I've been uh, watching some discussions on this and the, mm-hmm. the initially they thought it was all, well, it's going to help first time home buyers and all that. It isn't about first time home buyers Mm-mm. because the loan level adjustment will also help those people who are in the split entry home that want to move up to that mm-hmm. to that two story because they've got a higher family they may have a bump or bruise on their credit yep. and this will help them make that move up too yep. so it's not isolated um, to any particular price point and it's really you know I've always said 85 percent loan to value is a sweet spot and it continues to be a sweet spot you know but that's you know the the less you put down is that am I related then at all yeah because too? they have somebody else so if if I have 20 percent down I have no mortgage insurance but once you're at 15 percent down I have a little bit of mortgage insurance 10 percent down so now it's you and me partnering right on this so risk. the lender sees like oh okay yep. well we have the mortgage insurance piece if you do default so now we're saying I get to spread my risk as part so I'm going to give you a little bit lower interest rate because I don't have to have that high of an adjustment because I'm taking all the risk at 20 percent at what you know? point does the lender say you know, he's got so much skin in the game that really my risk is nominal mm-hmm. because he's got 25% or 30% or 20, whatever the number is. What is the number yeah. where, the, where the lender is going to say, hey, he's got so much into it, he's not going to walk. Yeah, we have, I mean, when you're looking at the charts, it's really that 70%. So you know, 30% down. 30% down. down. Mm-hmm. There's no adjustments. And in, in, it's kind of the way, it, the way it's been. Uh-huh. Again, most people aren't in that position. Right. It is interesting, though. We had one this week where they're putting 50% down and usually – you can get an appraisal waiver and get all this stuff. In this case, we couldn't because their credit was still banged up a little bit. Mm-hmm. They had money because they had lived in this home forever. So it's just always interesting. And that's why we run everything through underwriting prior to mm-hmm. just saying, hey, no, you know, because they wrote an offer. They're like, hey, we don't want an appraisal because they bid way high. Right. Mm-hmm. But now we have to have an appraisal. So now everybody's nervous and mm. we'll kind of see how that turns out. But. Um, Can you know in advance on an appraisal waiver if you have a specific property? If I, as long as I have an numbers? address, I okay. need an address. Yep. Then I can always run it, and I'll get see if I can get a, a property. So we can present an waiver. offer and say we've already got an appraisal waiver on yep. this one, and based on the oh, that's something. yep, and that's still client specific. Yep. Sure. Yep. Yeah, because yeah, it's sure. the balance of that individual's credit, the down payment, the house itself. And the house. Yep. Okay. So it's all the pieces together. So it's kind of good. And then I just want to touch on one down payment assistance program that um, that we've used a handful of times here and it's in the city of Woodbury and it's up to $30,000 and you can make as I was looking at this let me pull it up here real quick um, you can make a hundred and what is it hundred and forty seven hundred and forty six thousand dollars is the income limit so you can make up to a hundred and forty six thousand dollars and get a grant for thirty thousand dollars in the city of Woodbury to help you for down payment and closing costs Wow so just want to let people know. And Typically, the city of Woodbury, you need, they're looking for down payment assistance and help and all that. They right? need a lot of help in Woodbury. That's for <laughs> sure. That's for sure. 
So, Woodbury is one of those communities where you have maybe 25 homes on the market in the 400 to $800,000 price point. Mm-hmm. And then you add a new construction and you're at like 150 yep. because there's a lot of available new construction and that area mm-hmm. has been just expanding uh, east as they grow. Yep. And yep. It's a huge city. Huge city. It's so, huge, but it's kind of cool to know. So just people, I just want them to know we're doing a lot more with down payment assistance programs. So if you're curious, hey, is there money available? Let us know and we have a Real nice chart. We can just find if there's money available for you. In a, any any given community. Yep. Mm-hmm. So 651-231-2500 is my number. I'd love to have a conversation with you and see what we can do. Thanks for all the great info, Calvin. That's yep. it for this week. Log on to our website, hittnergroup.com, H-I-T-T-N-E-R group.com, or give us a call, 612 612-